again. Welcome to Great Ideas from Around the World. I'm Connie, and this is Nick. Hello. Today's quote is from Evelyn Beatrice Hall, who also went by Et G. Talentire. She was from England, and this comes from her 1906 book, The Friends of Voltaire. Are you ready? Yeah. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Obviously, this quote is used uh, most often in debates about freedom of speech and the importance of the right of freedom of speech. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. What does it mean to you, Connie? Well, freedom of speech is one of the most important rights that we have because it's one of the first things to go when a government transitions to a fascist government. So it's, it's the first thing on the chopping block. Yep. One of the reasons why they take it away is because lack of freedom of speech disable the society from processing facts, and so they can push their own agenda. I mean, that makes sense. It's pretty obvious that the moment you say, all my ideas, all of what I declare to be true is true, there should be no other addition to this discussion. That's the moment you lock yourself into the past. A lot of countries with fascist dictatorships, I'm thinking about uh, North Korea, I'm thinking about uh, Cuba, I'm thinking about uh, the USSR. When people would travel to those countries, it would be like traveling back in time because, you know, new ideas were no longer welcome. And so the pool of ideas basically stagnated. Right. Even uh, far back in history, a lot of the greatest and most popular scientists we read about are ones that really stirred the pot. They had new radical ideas about the nature of the universe or the nature of humanity and things like that. And whatever popular theology or, or country at the time would often you know, squash that, would often say, you just can't express those ideas, and so we're going to reject them. Often it would be generations later until a different scientist would, un- would uncover the same facts. But they lived in a time period where the ruling factions were more tolerant and And uh, those ideas became the building blocks on which modern society is is established. How can we prevent the loss of freedom of speech? Oh, I have no clue. Um, (laughs) I honestly don't, because it's a very very, uh, slippery thing. Um, Basically, what happens is people say that there's this fringe group, there are these fringe ideas... Right. That are just they're not they're just not polite. They're just not acceptable. Or it's these ideas that have led to all of our problems. It's these kind of people that have led to all our problems. So, you know, if you're a polite person, if you're a good person, you just you just don't express these ideas. You just don't talk about these certain things. And 99 percent of people say, well, OK, I don't want to be a jerk. You know, I don't want to don't want to be rude. So I'm just not going to worry about that. And overnight you have a taboo subject and. And then another unpopular, offensive, radical, or ridiculous idea is added onto that list. And people are like, okay, well, I don't want to talk about that either. And sometimes societies, you know, uh, rulers will come out with just a long list of things you can't do, you can't talk about. You know, sometimes it's even more more dramatic than that. Uh, you have different ancient empires will come in and, and take over another ancient empire. And they will set up new laws that will require the very next day everyone to worship their gods, you know, bow to their idols and things like that. I guess what I'm trying to say is there are many, 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 many different ways that a society can lose the the freedom of speech or the freedom to talk about what they want to or what they need to. One of these patterns I'm noticing is if you don't allow free speech to your enemies, then eventually you won't allow it for anyone. It's really rich to say, well, uh, we live in a society that's very tolerant. We, We believe in a diversity of ideas. Uh, except for this one thing over here, or that one thing over there. That's only terrible people, only our enemies, would say or think this kind of thing. Well, right. get real. That That's not freedom. Right. It's okay to disagree with somebody. In an ideal society, people should be able to disagree. Just because your friends don't agree with you on everything doesn't mean they're broken or flawed or wrong. All right. And, yeah, I think in our personal lives, this is this is a principle that we can, we can really think about because uh, no one on the planet will agree with you personally on 100% of every subject. I mean, even, even uh, husband, husband and wife, right, will find something to disagree about eventually. You know, even your twin will find something to argue with you about eventually. And there's no one else on the planet who will agree with you on everything. So why do we think that that's a standard? You know, why do we think that that's normal? that we should go out and find people who agree with us on everything. They just don't exist. So it's more realistic to say, hey, I really respect this person's views on X, Y, and Z, and then just focus on what you have in common. You know, if someone disagrees with you on something, that's great. That's normal. (laughs) So what does 
today's quote mean to you? Let us know in the comments. If you have a favorite quote or an idea that you'd like us to make into a video, let us know. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.